What do Spider-Man and Willy Wonka both have in common? Well, they're two of the biggest and best movie stars under the age of 30. Hi, I'm Zoe Jewell. Welcome back to A Quick Look. And today we're going to be talking about the top 10 movie stars under the age of 30. We know about Julia Roberts, George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Reese Witherspoon, some of the biggest stars to star in movies over the last handful of decades. But there is a new crop of young, talented actors who are getting starring roles, who are leading franchises, getting Oscar nominations, and who I believe will be the face of movies for years and years and years to come. Now, just a reminder that this is a personal list. This is a subjective list. But I would love to know in the comments what you think of the of the ranking, where you think certain actors sh should be. So please feel free to leave all feelings, thoughts, concerns in the comments below. Okay, let's jump into it with number 10, Jenna Ortega. Now, you may be asking yourself, who is Jenna Ortega? Well, I think she is definitely going to be one of the people that we look back on in 20 years and say, yep, she was destined to be a star. She's only 21 years old, but she's probably best known for her starring role in the Netflix series Wednesday, the Addams Family Netflix series, which was a massive, massive hit on Netflix when it came out, I believe in 2022. So there's a very, very solid chance that if you do not know her, your children, kids you know, teenagers know who this person is because that show was massive. But she's also been the star of the new Scream films that have come out. And I think her work in those films really show her ability to like lead a franchise, be a part of a major film franchise. But she also has a number of exciting, interesting projects up ahead. So she's going to be in the new Beetlejuice film, the Tim Burton Beetlejuice film, and in Taika Waititi's Clara and the Sun movie. Two major films with two big time directors. I think she's really on her way up. She may not be as big of a star now as some of the other people on this list, but I think she is well on her way to being a very, very successful movie star in the future. Okay, moving on to number nine, Mr. Paul Meskel. Now, Paul really jumped on the scene, very much like Jenna, in a television show, in the, in the Hulu limited series, Normal People, which was based on the book by Sally Rooney. And the, the show came out in, I believe, 2020, quarantine, COVID time, and it was a really big hit. It was a, it, it was a massive success. A lot of people watched it. A lot of people loved it. And it was Paul who really was like a discovery. And I think people felt like at the time, this guy is going places. He is going to have a very long, successful career in Hollywood. But I think, at least for myself, I always saw him, or I initially saw him as a guy who was going to take more of the like indie film route and maybe not be in as many franchises or major blockbuster films as some other people that are going to be on this list. But what I think is really interesting about Paul and why I think he's going to be so successful going forward and will genuinely be a very, very big star is his ability to do both indie, smaller projects, more awards caliber films, and also do the bigger blockbuster, big budget type film. So for example, he got an Oscar nomination for his work in this tiny little film, indie film called After Sun. But he's also going to be starring in Ridley Scott's Gladiator 2. That's coming out very, very soon. So his ability to be in like a massive Ridley Scott project and then also do quieter, smaller stuff that to me shows not only his range and his talent as an actor, but that he's going to be able to have longevity in this in this industry for a, a very, very long time. So I think he's going places. I think he's going to be an Oscar winner. I think he's going to lead a franchise. He, he definitely has a very long career ahead of him. And I'm excited to see what he does next because he's very, very talented. Okay, number eight, Anya Taylor-Joy. Like the other people I've mentioned, 
I feel like Anya's big break came in a TV show, The Queen's Gambit, which was on Netflix and was a massive success, was a big hit, got her Emmy nominations, all these different types of awards recognition for her work in that show. But Anya's also been able to do really great work in film, and she's been in some really interesting projects. She was in Split, which I think was a unique and interesting project for her to, for her to take on. She was in The Menu, which came out, I think, last year or the year before that. But what really signals to me that she's taking the next step into movie stardom is that she is going to be in the next Mad Max film. Fur I believe it's called Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, which is coming out later this year. And when you step into a franchise, specifically the Mad Max franchise, which obviously we know is massive and huge, that shows that you have leading lady qualities and you can take on a franchise and you can you can sell a movie and a studio is w like willing to put you in their film that's a sign that you have star making qualities and abilities so i think again her ability to do television to do big franchise to do more interesting maybe more like sort of um genre specific films again show that she can do it all. She's got a long future ahead of her. And I think she's also a very interesting actor. I think I think she's not like some of the other actors that we see in Hollywood. Um, just like the way that she performs as an actor is just very, it's very special. And I'm excited to see what else she can do in, in her c career. Um, okay, number seven. And the first of a few euphoria cast members to be featured on this list, Sydney Sweeney. Now, there's no question that Sydney Sweeney is like the it girl of the moment. Everyone's obsessed with her. I think she is every single guy's celebrity crush. Like people love Sydney Sweeney. As I mentioned earlier, got her start on Euphoria. That was like her big, big sort of breakout performance. She's great on that show. She was in season one of White Lotus. So she'd done a lot of TV. She was also in, in The Handmaid's Tale. But it's really her, her work this year, particularly that make me think, okay, I think she's going to have a career in film. And I think she's going to be a movie star for a very, very long time. Because she starred in the romantic comedy Anyone But You, um, which made a lot of money, was very successful. And she's also in the new Madam Web film. So again, I've said this countless times, but her ability to do rom-com, to do Marvel action film, to do TV, I think that kind of signals just all the things that she could do going forward. I think she's a great dramatic actor. I think she can do the lighter comedy stuff as well. She can do the action. People love her again. So, Sydney Sweeney, this might be an interesting comparison, but she kind of is, I think, our, like, today's version of a Scarlett Johansson, perhaps. Um, so keep an eye out for her going forward. I think, I think she has an interesting eye for projects. I think she takes on interesting work, and I think she'll be around for a very long time. Number six, Sydney's Euphoria co-star, Jacob Elordi. So as, as I mentioned, big kind of, I shouldn't say his big break came on Euphoria because actually his big break, I think, came in the Kissing Booth movies that were very, very big, sort of young adult films that were on Netflix. But Euphoria was the first time that I think we saw Jacob's like real ability as an actor and his talent as an actor. And what I appreciate about Jacob and what I think shows that he genuinely loves acting and wants to be in great projects is the fact that he's taken his like, his stardom and worked with some really, really interesting people. So he was in Sofia Coppola's Priscilla as Elvis. He was just in Emerald Fennell's Saltburn, which was a huge hit and everyone has seen that film by now. So he's worked with these really interesting people. He's taken on these interesting roles. And I think that shows that 
maybe he's not always going to go for the big budget blockbuster movies like maybe some other people will but that he's going to be consistently working on interesting things interesting projects and i could very easily see him getting an oscar nomination in the very near future just because of the fact that he works with such interesting people and gets to be in these films that are very critically acclaimed so and of course he has the look of a movie star and I just, I don't want to say he's like a Leonardo DiCaprio because I don't think he's there yet, but <clears throat> he he has the look of like a traditional movie star guy and he also has the taste of a traditional movie star kind of guy. So curious to see what he does next. I'm curious to see if he ever steps into like the franchise Marvel DC world but for now, I really appreciate the fact that he's like working with interesting filmmakers and taking interesting, unique roles, because I think it speaks a lot about his taste. Number five, Saoirse Ronan. I love Saoirse Ronan. She is one of my, maybe my favorite actress out there, because I think she is so incredibly talented. She's obviously been working for a very long time. She got her first Oscar nomination when she was a little teenager. And she's been working cons consistently over the course of her career. Now, she's almost 30. She's a, just a couple of months away from turning 30. Um, so she barely, barely makes the cutoff to make this list. But I couldn't not include her because of just her incredible talent. She's also been nominated for an, act, for, for an, for an Oscar four times. Four times under the age of 30 for Atonement, which was her first Oscar nomination, Brooklyn, Lady Bird, Little Women. I mean, she's just so incredibly talented. Again, like a lot of other people on this list, I think she has great taste. I think she takes interesting projects. Now, the reason that she's five and not maybe higher on the list is because she hasn't stepped into the bigger budget franchise type of roles, which I think really is what makes a traditional movie star is the ability to do both. And she's kind of stuck to, she, she's been in work that has made a lot of money, but she hasn't done anything that's like super big budget um, and is like for sort of, I, I, I don't want to say mass appeal because a project like Little Women is for the masses and lots of people saw that film. But I'd be curious to see if she ever steps into like, again, the Marvel's DC um, world and, uh, and takes on any of those projects. Because if she does, I think that's what's going to take her up to the next level. But much like comparing Sydney Sweeney to Scarlett Johansson, I feel like Saoirse Ronan is kind of the Kate Winslet of our time. Um, and I could see her having a very similar career to Kate going forward. Number four, speaking of Little Women, the Amy to Saoirse's Joe, Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh, I think, I, I mentioned how Saoirse hasn't done the franchise stuff. Florence has done both. She's managed to do interesting, unique projects, and then also has stepped into the, the IP franchise type of work. So she kind of got her big break in Lady Macbeth. She was in Midsommar, which was a huge, huge film. Little Women, which got her her first Oscar nomination. But she also has been in the Marvel world. She was in the Black Widow movie. Um, she's going to be in Dune 2, which is coming out very, very soon. So again, her ability to, to, to do both and, and do some franchise, interesting, big budget projects, and then also do more interesting um, genre specific projects, I think really show her ability, her range. She's just such a powerhouse performer. Whenever I watch her on screen, I just, I really feel her performance because she just, she just captivates. She's just kind of, you, you can't take, take your eyes off of her. And I feel like people recognize that in her from the very first time she came on screen. Like she's just, she's just got it, whatever it is. And, um, and I think that she also has seems like she's able to read Hollywood pretty well and recognize when she needs to do something or when she feels like she should do something that's 
more big ticket and then when to do something that's a little bit more quiet and more intimate. And I like that she does both a lot. Number three, Tom Holland. There's no question that Tom Holland is probably the most recognizable actor on this list. Starring in Spider-Man as Spider-Man guarantees that you are going to be very, very, very well known for a very, very long time. You know, bursting on the scene as Peter Parker in the new Spider-Man franchise version, he immediately won me over as someone who actually really loves the Spider-Man franchise and who has really liked Toby's and Andrew Garfield's versions of, of Spider-Man. I was like, do we need a third version of this character in film? Turns out we do because Tom Holland's version of Peter Parker is so incredibly good. He's incredible in those films, not just his own Spider-Man films, but the Avengers projects as well. Like truly, truly very, very fantastic. He's been in other projects. I think people first probably saw him when he was really young in the movie, The Impossible with um, Naomi Watts. <clears throat> He's been in other work like Cherry and Uncharted. The only reason I probably don't have him number one is because we know he can do the big franchise, the big ticket stuff. He struggled to find the right sort of like interesting, critically acclaimed projects that other people on this list have found. I don't think he's really found his footing quite yet when it comes to that type of work, like a being in an Oscar nominated project or being in a really interesting and unique indie film. I... I don't want to like throw his agents under the bus, but I do wonder if maybe he should find new representation because I think he is such a talented actor. I think he is so good. And I would love to see him in just better work outside of Spider-Man because I feel like he has it in him and he just hasn't been able to find the projects that really showcase his talent, his ability. Um, and that's a bummer. So not that I need to be giving Tom Holland advice advice because he's doing just fine on on his own and making lots of money and is very successful um but i would love to see him yeah just like maybe take more of the jacob Elordi track and start just like picking interesting projects working with interesting directors um even if it's more small intimate indie because he's got the talent he has the ability and i like to see him in that world as well as obviously spider-man too Number two, Timothy Chalamet. Timothy Chalamet, I think, is really the Leonardo DiCaprio of the next generation because he has just the most incredible range. I think we all got to know him in Call Me By Your Name, Oscar-nominated performance, incredible performance. But he has really followed it up time and time and time again with just the most interesting projects. He was in um, Little Women as Joe, um, or sorry, not as Joe, as Lori, um, which was, I think, a great project for him to be a part of. And obviously working with the queen Greta Gerwig is always the right, the right move for, for like any actor. He was in Lady Bird with Saoirse Ronan. Um, and then taking on the Dune project and being in that franchise has been so smart because obviously, yes, Dune, Dune is a franchise. It's huge. It's massive. Lots of people watch it, but it's also, it's very um, critically acclaimed as well. So it's like, it's this beautiful mixing of two, of two worlds, which is like big budget box office films and also interesting, great filmmaker, um, like high, high, craftsmanship, I suppose, which I think really suits Timothy Chalamet very, 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 very well. Um, and he's just been able to do it all. And, and there's really been no dip for, for me in his career. Like since he came on the scene, he's really taken, con continued to take great projects. Willy Wonka, obviously, I think was a unique move for him. It was different. He sings, he dances. It's a kid's film. But it was that movie, honestly, for me that set said, okay, like this guy can do it. Like if, if, if you can lead a kid's movie and be charming and fun and bring people in to come see you, then you're going to be a star for the next 
30, 40 years. Um, I, I, I have no doubt that Timothy Chalamet is going to win Oscars. He, he's going to be the guy, very much like a Leonardo DiCaprio, for a very, very, very long time. Um, he's very talented, but I think he also just like has that star quality that you need to have if you want to last in this, in, in this industry. So Timothy Chalamet, number two. Okay, last but certainly not least, Zendaya. Zendaya is number one. I don't know if there's a bigger star in terms of like acting, because obviously maybe Taylor Swift's a bigger star, but Zendaya for me is just huge. A huge star with a very, very bright future ahead of her because this girl can do it all, okay? Gets her start on the Disney Channel when she's a teenager and manages to really like, I, I don't think anyone expected this Disney star to be one of the biggest movie stars in in the world, but she's but she's done it. Um, obviously starring in Euphoria, like Jacob Elordi, Sydney Sweeney, Emmy award winning actor from that fe- for from that show. So talented in that show, like shows just how incredible she is as an actor because that is not an easy role to portray. I mean, she is top, top tier. Then of course, the Spider-Man franchise as Mary Jane or MJ, I suppose is what, you know, they, they call her in the, in the films, but she's so good in that franchise. She's obviously in the Dune franchise as well. But then she's also taken on some other interesting projects. She was in the very kind of like intimate small movie, Malcolm and Marie, that came out, I believe, a couple years ago. Um, she's going to be in this really unique film um, called Challengers that's coming out very, very soon. I just, I just see her being the star for years and years and years to come. And I think, of course, when you go by one name, that kind of already tells you everything that you need to know um because she's just she's zendaya like she is the star she is like beyonce um and i i really can't think of a project or a genre that she wouldn't be able to do romantic comedy thriller action horror um I mean, genuinely everything. She could do everything. She is she is so good. She's so talented. And people love her too. That's that's the other thing. Like she has such a fan base and such a following. And when you can can combine all that, like talent, ability, fandom, intrigue, int- like all of that into one thing, you got yourself a movie star. So that is my list, 10 to one. Please let me know in the comments again what you think. If I put somebody not in the right spot, if you change it up, if you would add somebody, take somebody out, please let me know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.